Hey, Coach, we, we talked to Zach Wilson on Monday, and he talked about the time he spent with John Beck and how he's been learning to kind of throw with his entire body. And I was just curious, from your perspective, where have you seen the biggest improvements in Zach Wilson's play thus far in camp? Um, he's improved in every area, really. He's a um, pretty impressive what he's done with his offseason. You know, it's the first real offseason he's had in three years. And... Um, Total, total transformation of his body. He looks, he looks really good. He's big and strong, and um, he's just such a hard worker. He's worked hard at every part of the game, and so he's throwing the ball really well. He looks really fit and strong, and he's making great decisions. You can tell he's really taken to heart uh, some of the mistakes he's made in the past, as well as uh, you know we're trying to build on the things we already do well in this program. And we had a pretty good season throwing the ball last year, and we're trying to we're trying to build on those things and and uh, eliminate some of the mistakes we made. Aaron, good to see you. What's up? I wanted to ask, uh, I wanted to ask about uh, the, you know, the, the, the changes that have been made um, as far as postponement, both the, the Big Ten and the Pac-12 um, referenced um, the fact that they don't know very much about the long-term health implications of COVID, particularly the um, myocarditis and the possible heart issues for athletes that, that they referenced. I just wondered what your perspective of, is on that and kind of how that impacts your view of, of the right direction for football right now. You know, I, I'm the, I don't know anything about that specifically. Um, all, everyone in this building has great respect for the virus and we're all uh, operating under the guidelines that we've been given. Everyone's trying their best to follow the rules around here. I mean, everyone's masked up everywhere, basically, on the field, off the field. Um, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can to follow the guidelines we've been given. And uh, at the same time, we feel really fortunate that we get to be out there practicing. You know, there's, we got six practices in spring where a lot of teams got zero. We're already eight practices into it now. And I think it's just, we're just having, it's a blessing to be out there. If you have to wear a mask and, and uh, it's no big deal. I mean, it's just fun to be playing football. There's a lot of teams that have not practiced since last season. I mean, there's, there's, I don't know exactly what that number is, but it's a good number of teams that finished last season, didn't get any practices in spring and still haven't started. And so we're just taking it one day at a time, enjoying, enjoying the moment. We're not even really thinking about what's ahead, just other than just enjoying each practice and trying to be, become a better team for whenever we do play. Let's go Jay, Mitch, then Caleb. Aaron, I wonder if you could just kind of set the scene for us at practice since we're not there. I mean, with all this uncertainty and other schools not being able to play, just what's the atmosphere like? And what are the, what are the guys' attitudes? Uh, well, it, to be honest with you, it's a little weird. I mean, it's weird to be coaching with a mask over your face, and you know everybody out there is masked up. Players are masked up. It's 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 interesting, um, but you know, I, like I just alluded to a second ago, I think everybody's just having so much fun being out there. You know, the game's kind of uh, you know you, you realize right now how precious the opportunities are to play, and so we are just having fun out there. You know, it's fall camp, but it's not drudgery at all. We're, we're competing. We're having fun getting better. We're all, like I said, following the rules about how we've been uh, instructed to behave. And we're trying to do the best we can to keep everybody safe and healthy. But at the same time, we are having fun out there practicing. This is the most lively and enjoyable fall camp I've ever been a part of so far. I mean, it's, it's been competitive. It's been fun. Just a lot of enthusiasm. And I think, I think we have mature enough players to realize how fortunate we are Every one of these guys on this team has friends in other programs that have either had their season canceled or their season still in question and they haven't even been able to practice yet. And so every rep of every practice is precious and we're, we're making the most of it. Coach, when you, when you talk about trying to get better uh, as, a, as a team and a program, I mean, how, how are you uh, trying to get the, the quarterbacks better in terms of divvying up the reps? How does that get handled in a given practice each day? Um, so far, it's been equal reps with Zach, Jaron, and Baylor. Uh, exactly equal so far through, I can't remember if today was eight or nine, eighth or ninth practice. Um, and then I've been mixing Sol J in there where I can. He's, he's gotten some reps every day as well. He's really 
exciting young player when he goes in. Uh, we keep joking that something exciting is going to happen. <laughs> he might he might do the wrong thing and still make a great play. He's just he's just uh, he's pretty fun to watch. Um, that won't last forever. As we, as we get closer to a game, we will start. You know, we'll whittle those reps down and get get whoever's going to be the starter ready, ready to play. Um, but right now, it's you know, game is far enough away that. I feel like there, and there's enough red the practices are pretty long right now. We're getting a lot of work, so there's enough there for all those guys to get some. Hey coach, uh, you just mentioned Soljay and uh, Kalani and Coach Grimes also mentioned that he was having a good week last week. What was it that kind of um, made him an attractive option for you guys when you were recruiting him and scouting him? And how is that kind of uh, unfolded and come like manifest itself as he's been in practices with you guys. Oh, he's just a playmaker. He's a, I mean, he's he's kind of wild out there. He doesn't know what he's doing yet all the time, but he's super athletic. Um, got a lot of confidence in himself, and like I said, he'll he'll he will uh, do some instinctive things that ju that just uh, you know are hard to coach. He he has a great feel for when to make a back shoulder throw, you know, and that's one of those things you. You can talk and talk and talk about it, and some guys just know when to do it. And he's he's one of those guys. Um, he also has uh, he's really good with the ball in his hands. He's deceptive in his ball handling in the run game. He's slippery as a runner and a scrambling and that kind of thing. Um, he's very unpolished. <laughs> he's got a long way to go, but um, I'm excited about his future. Go ahead, Norma. Um, with all this uncertainty, uncertainty sorry, um, in your opinion, what would it take for BYU to sort of take a step back and consider canceling the season this year? Um, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not involved in that decision. That's not my – I don't really have any say in that. I just, I'm a coach, and if I'm told to go to work, and then I go to work and coach these guys, and I'll, whatever they tell me to do, I'll do it the way I'm told. I'm, we – I wear a mask the whole day in the building. I took it off for this meeting right here because there's nobody within 15 feet of me. And, um, you know, but in the building, I'm masked up. I'm following whatever rules I'm supposed to follow. I'm masked up on the field. And if they, uh, if they instruct us otherwise, then that's what we'll do. But right now, right now we're going. And it's, I, I feel actually really good about the way, the way we're operating here. I think everyone is, you know, we've got a mature team and everyone's taking great care to, do what they're supposed to do. Let's go, Jared, Mitch, and Matt. Aaron, talk, I know the red zone obviously has been a big emphasis. Talk about the um, passing attack and kind of how, how you guys have addressed the, you know, the passing side of it when being in the red zone, because that's obviously an area that you wanted to improve on going into the season. Yeah, yeah, we had such a good year two years ago. Um, it's funny. Two years ago, we, we, uh, you know, we struggled a little bit in the first year just to just to get down there enough times. But we did a great job when we did get down there. We did a great job getting touchdowns. And then last year, you know, we're like top ten or fifteen in the country in getting down there, and this not doing a good enough job of getting touchdowns. And so, um, you know, I don't really want to tell you what we what we're doing, but. It's been a huge emphasis this off season is to be a better red zone offense. We started practicing red zone first practice, and we've practiced it every single practice so far. Which, in my career, I've never practiced red zone nine straight the first nine days of fall camp. That's the first time I've ever experienced that. But we've done it every single day, and um, we're going to be a lot better. I'm sh I'm certain of it. Coach, you know you talked a little bit earlier about uh, how program, the BYU has been at, have been fortunate to have a lot of practices compared to most uh, yeah. around the country. What, even if a season doesn't get played, like what advantages come from just getting these practices in uh, for a program? Because I mean, every single day, we just don't know what's going to happen with, with the season. But if there's, there's no season, what, what value are these practices going forward for the long term of the program? Well, the practices are huge. I mean, I don't know if people really understand how important practice is. I mean, that's how you get better, you know, and the NCAA allows you 15 practices in spring ball. That's it, 15. And in fall camp, you get 29 practices before your first game. 
okay? Once the season starts, you basically practice three times a week. So that's about somewhere 36 to 40 something practices. So really, in most football seasons, you're more than halfway done with your practice season before you even play your first game. And then once that game starts, those practices are so limited. Uh, as a coach, you start to gain appreciation for how critical every single practice is, how, how critical every rep is, and then you try to pass that importance on to your players. Like, hey, this certain play in our offense is going to get X number of reps when you, because you just, you do the math, you get this many practices and this many plays in our offense and there's X amount of plays per practice. You start doing the math, you, you realize each one of those, each one of those practice reps is super critical. And, and then you divide that, those reps up between players, you're talking about now they're even more critical. And so the more we can uh, pass that importance on to our players, I think the better that they, uh, the more urgency they have at practice. And um, so far in this camp, there's been an incredible sense of urgency. Uh, and I think more than anything, just like a, a sense of gratitude that we get to be out there playing. And it's been really fun. Outside of the quarterbacks, who are some of the guys they're distributing the ball to that have stuck out to you so far through fall camp? Well, the easy answer is Bushman. Um, you know, I think. Um, He's always been a good player, but he might be also, he, you know, he's one of our best players, but he might also be our most improved player so far in camp. I mean, he's, he's um, had a, a really good off season. He looks big and strong. Um, he's improved in his route running and his, he's learning how to release better when people press him at the line of scrimmage. He's a better blocker than he's ever been. And um, we're going to we're using him in a lot more ways than we have in the past, um, which I'm not afraid to say that I, I think that he's it's going to be really unpredictable for teams to figure out where he's going to be lined up and uh, we're using him in various personnel groups. And so that's that's been that's an easy answer. But I think also, uh, you know, there's been a great improvement in all of our veteran players, our veteran skill guys, uh, our offensive linemen. I mean, it's been you're going to see, I think, just like I said, practices matter, and we've had a chance to play together for three years now. Most of these guys have been starting and playing together for th this will be their third year together, and now these practices we got in spring and fall camp, you're seeing daily growth in each of them, and I'm really excited to see what we do when we get a chance to play a game. Okay, we're going to go for our last two questions here. We'll go with Greg, Norma, and Jared. Aaron, Aaron, um, what of this current situation has been maybe the biggest challenge the way you see it? And is there anything about it that might result in some kind of long-term benefit for the program, the guys that are going through it? Well, yeah, the biggest challenge, I think, for all of us, and I, th I think this isn't just for athletes, through this whole thing is you just sort of, our whole, everyone's worlds have been kind of turned upside down, right? And we've all gone, gone through these days where you're like, you know, the days where I couldn't go to work, where I was just told to stay home. It's like, okay, well, what, what do I do? Like, it was a whole new, tr how, do I, how do I do my job? How do I, what's my purpose today? What do, you know, and I think these athletes went through that as well for a while. Um, now we're, the world's a little bit more normal now that we're seeing each other every day, working out, practicing. And um, I think the biggest challenge right now is not um, getting distracted with, how the whole national scene changes every two hours. You know, it's like, you, you know, you, one minute you think you're playing, the next minute the whole world's coming to an end and we're not playing. So we're, right now we're not too focused on that. We're just trying to be the best team we can be. We know we're gonna play football at some point. It might be in four weeks from now, it might be who knows when, but when that time comes, we're gonna be ready to play because we're taking advantage of every practice we get right now. And we're really just competing uh, we're just trying to hold ourselves to a high standard as a team, and I'm um, seeing a lot of great leadership right now with that. And so I think that's the benefit of it, Greg, is that we're we're um, we're growing from this and just trying to establish a certain standard of play. And um, and then when the time comes that we get to play, we're going to be a better team than we've been in the past. Thanks. How does it feel um, to sort of see? I know you're saying like you don't want to be distracted with all the news, but BYU is now the last remaining Utah college football team. And how does it feel to just sort of 
be alone in your quest for this fall season? I haven't even thought about that. I just, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I've got, I just got done with practice uh, and just got off the field right before this started. And I'm going to um, go watch the film in a little while and, and uh, figure out how we can get better. And I'm not really thinking about any other teams or what's going on anywhere else. And uh, just not doesn't matter to me. I'm just getting our trying to get our team better and and uh, take care of these players in this program and just follow whatever whatever rules and policies we have. Aaron, I know you're very focused on fall camp, of course, as we've been talking about. But I also know you've got a lot of friendships at other programs. Conversations there. What are those like? If you either text or phone, or I don't even know if you take time to talk to those guys. I just wondered what it's like uh, conversing with your peers outside the program as, you know, when, if and when you do that. Um, I haven't talked to anybody since we started fall camp. And I, I do stay in touch with a lot of, you know, friends in other programs around the country. Um, but usually once the season starts, that contact is minimal. You just get too busy and focused on what we're doing here. And, um, you know, I got, this is year three, and I'm expecting us to be a lot better and taking this, you got a job to do. So I'm not really uh, too concerned with what's going on anywhere else.